Greetings, your My Money Matters coach here. Um, and today, we're getting back into the Candlestick Bible. <coughs> um, the, candlestick, the Candlestick Trading um, Bible. We already um, went through um, the the candlesticks so now we moved on to part two which is market structure hey. i had to pull out the book <laughs> as i as i teach i learn so that's why i keep on all right so here we go um hold on i can't even find the album all right is this it? Yeah, I done lost the deck on pictures. All right, but here we go. So first, we're gonna start off with um, market structure. <clears throat> okay, so one of the most important things that you need to learn as a trader is not only um, how to read the candles, right, and what all the candles are saying to you. If you missed, um. The candle training there were four parts you can go back and watch those um, but this is about the structure right so this lets us know um, so when you make trades um, there's three ways that the market can move up um, down or um, sideways right and so once you start practicing um, learning market structure then it's it, then it's easy for you to look at a naked chart um, and you know know which way it's going so <clears throat> In order to be successful, we have to study how the markets move, right, and how traders behave, right? So the traders, the buyers and the sellers are the ones who are influencing the market and their behavior or activity um, also influences the market, right? So if you can master market structure, just like we have been mastering candles, um, then uh, you will be able to answer these questions. What's the naked chart? So a naked chart is when you don't have indicators, right? You just pull up a chart and it's just a chart, right? It becomes non-naked when you put on indicators like the Fibonacci re retracement or the EMA, the estimated moving average or the Bollinger Bands or the Stoch. You know all them things they be putting on the bottom of the chart, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you don't have none of that on the chart, it's a naked chart. Or like if like with our investing academy if you go to like liberty and hourglass like if you just um or like even like liberty right the one that millie mills uses if you just pull up the chart it's just a naked chart but when she says go activate the web slinger when you click on that she puts all the indicators on there all right okay and so when we learn market structure we will be able to know i know <laughs> I need all the clothes on my charts too. So we need to know what the crowds are doing, who is in control of the market, right? And shout out to our guru, Shay. She is always talking about who is in control, the bulls or the bears, the buyers or the sellers, right? And I think this is one of the most, most important things is when do you get in the trade and when do you get out, okay? <laughs> right, you can make some money. And you can lose some money based off of perfect entry okay and when do you need to stay away okay so if you um learn market structure immediately you'll be able to know hey this is when i get in this is when i get out and i'm not messing with it right now okay so through price action you will experience three types of markets okay so right now we're just going to go through the trending markets maybe raging so you have trending raging and choppy markets okay so we're going to be learning how to identify all of these markets and first we're going to start with the trending markets okay so a trending means that um with the price it is a repetition right so if the market is going up that means that when the market is low that's like the lowest low so every time it goes up it creates a higher low right and when the market goes up the highest price it keeps creating a higher high right um let me go to that picture okay so here's an example of an uptrend 
right <clears throat> at those parts where they put the little boxes at that is um the highest you know the highest high in that part of the chart okay so you don't need indicators so we really don't need indicators to know if the market is in an uptrend or a downtrend right you can just look at it visually okay and also depending on what time frame you look at the chart is going to um depend too because you can look at a chart in like one minute and it look like it's a downtrend but if you pull it back out to like an hour or um a day you can see that it's actually going in another direction like gold for example okay all right, so if you look at the bottom, that's an example of a downtrend, meaning the price started at a high point, right? And now each of the highs become lower and each of the lows become lower, okay? So if you hear people talking about higher highs, lower lows, lower highs, and higher lows, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about um, whether the market is trending or not, okay? So... Uh, the one going down shows a bearish market. Bearish means that it's a seller. It's selling. Okay, so they're easy to identify. You don't have to complicate your analysis. Um, right? And so, basically, to get um, acquainted with this, all you would have to do is technically, technically just go um, grab a chart and then... Um, okay, I'll go do it now. Hold on, y'all. It's going to pause. idea of um the trend right so how do we trade in trending markets okay so if you can identify the trend it's going to be easy for you to trade if the market is an uptrend right if the market is going up you having higher highs and um higher lows then you want to take buys okay you want to be looking for any opportunity for a buy okay when the market is going up you're looking for buys okay you have some risky traders who trade against the trend but if you are a new trader the trend is your friend okay all right when is the right time to enter the market okay so trending markets are characterized by two moves okay you got the impulsive move and then you have the retracement okay an impulse is at the point where um the price started going up you can't hear me you can't hear me hello you can't hear me hello can you hear me okay i'm gonna have to come back then y'all can't hear me okay so on this one an impulse means that it's when it's the big move right retracement means that so the market always pulls back down um before going back up right so when i our educators explained it to us like think of a slingshot like if you're trying to th put something in the slingshot if you want it to you know go far or fling somewhere you have to pull it back um in order for you to get that trajectory so um when the market is going up you always have to be prepared for a retracement where it will start to go back down and then it's going to go back up right so that is the time where you want to get in at the um end of the retracement zone right okay okay so uh the retracement move is also called the corrective move Okay, professional traders understand how the trends work. They always buy at the beginning of an impulse move and take the profits at the end of it. Okay, so right when the market is about to retrace, they take their profits. And so I struggle with this because it's like you have to sit there and watch the chart in order to know when the retracement is, right? And if you are swing trading, you know, and day trading and holding a position and you're not really checking charts like that. Okay, so this is the reason why the market makes an impulsive move in the direction of the trend. Okay, so if you are aware of how trending markets move, you will know that the best place to buy is at the beginning of an impulse move. So basically, you want to wait until it retraces. Right, at the beginning of a retracement move. It says traders. Okay, let me see. Traders who buy an uptrend market at the beginning of a retracement move, they got caught by professional traders and they don't understand why the market hit their stop loss. 
before moving in the predicted direction. Okay, so let's see. Why you bring all your noise out here? We study a market structure right now. All right, here we go. Okay, so this is likewise the downtrend. As you can see, you have an impulsive move that goes down. And you have the retracement. It goes up to correct itself. So likewise, um, it says if you try to sell in the retracement when the market is going up, right, you're going to get caught in the trade and you're going to lose your trade. Okay, and a lot of times, um, that's what I would do. Yes. What, son? Mm -mm. Okay, so the most important question is how to identify the beginning of the impulsive move so you can enter the market at the right time. Okay. Okay, so you have to uh, master. Turn it down. All right, so we have to master marking up um, our support and resistant levels, right? And um, at first, I would not do this. I recently started doing this, right? And so if you don't know how to draw your support and resistant levels, then here we go. All right, support and resistance. Okay, so they are areas where buyers and sellers find equilibrium, right? The price keeps touching there, and it's a major turning point. Okay, so these levels are formed when prices reverse and change directions, right? So if you look down there, um, most of the red lines going across are at a point where the price was going up and went down and retraced. Okay, they tend to contain price movement until price breaks through it okay so <clears throat> in trending markets support and resistance are formed from swing points so the swing point is basically at the top if you look down there it's at the top of the tops and at the bottom of the bottoms okay Y'all got all the snaps. <laughs> all right, so up there it showed how um, to draw support levels after the breakout. Okay, down here, let's see, this is a downtrend market. You can still see the swing points and how the market was testing um, these levels. Okay, and so the purpose of these levels is so that you know what, what levels the market um, respects, okay? And don't forget you can download this on Google. All right. If you understand how price action acts in the trending market then we can predict with a higher accuracy when the next impulsive move will begin okay so one way to catch the beginning of an impulsive move is to draw trend lines okay um, that's something else recently i've been starting to do okay so a trend line basically is a linear line um that goes in the, the direction of the market so if it's i'm um, going up then it's going to start from the bottom and left and go down diagonal to the right okay bullish markets will tend to create a linear support level and bearish markets will form a linear resistance okay so bullish means when it's a buy when it's a buy you have a um support and then when it's a sell you have resistance 
I'm sure I mixed it up. <laughs> I don't think I said that right. <laughs> okay, with drawing these trend lines, right, you need two minimum swing points, okay? You got to try to connect them together, okay? Um, and you always want to start with a four hour or daily uh, time frame, okay? Sometimes people like use the week, um, if they like marking up their charts in the beginning of the week, but okay, four hour chart, trend line, swing points, get two points and connect them, right? And it should look like the area down here, okay. Alrighty, so when the market moves this way, um, basically, nine times out of ten, when the market came down to this trend line, right, the trend continued, and it continued to go in an impulse move before it retraced, okay? Um, or once it retraced, it hit the trend line and then did the impulsive move, okay? I can't really see the words because the comments right in my way. <laughs> Ethereum is a good example of what I'm speaking on. Yeah, I haven't been. I I um I wasn't in Ethereum. Um, I was in Ripple Bitcoin and I was chasing gold last night and this morning. I have to learn the difference between swing trading gold and when people be sending out scalper alerts. Because I think last night y'all was scalping. But the position I put in was a swing trade. Alright. Um, I'm going to save the raging market for next time. I think I just showed this. Okay, but anywho... Go look up a chart, right? Try to find you some support and resistance levels. I want y'all to go look for some um, impulsive and some retracements, right? And try to draw some trend lines on a four-hour chart, okay? So if you do your homework, make sure you screenshot it and send it in, okay? And we'll see you next time with studying the raging market.